Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. I have a story to share, and I'm going to open up tonight with a, a short story here that's relative to the content of tonight's show. Today, in fact, I found myself at the dentist office. I had transferred over to a holistic dentist, one that a friend of mine had uh, highly recommended, and it was sort of a divine intervention type synchronistic story and how it all came to be, but I ended up in the seat today. Interestingly enough, they found a hidden infection in one of my teeth that had produced no symptoms, no pain, absolutely no irritants at all. And it turned out that this infection was quite serious and it was going to take a pretty, you know, significant dental procedure to remove it. I thought about this today and I said, isn't that interesting how things can just lay so hidden underneath the surface? absolutely causing what seems to be no interference, nothing unordinary, and yet they can take our lives. They have the power to really do some serious damage. And as we go along our lives or our day, going from thing to thing, following our routines, we don't often think about how anything under the surface or beyond the scope of what we can see and understand affects us. My last show with Eve Lorgen was very, very popular amongst my listeners and, and uh, readers, and I got a lot of feedback from the show. And so when I decided to book my guest tonight, I thought how interesting that the order of those shows had happened, that we had Eve come on to talk about interference from multidimensional type, interdimensional type beings, ETs, whatever you want to call them, and how she had studied cases and cases and cases of these types of happenings. And I said, you know, this is really interesting. Well, my guest tonight has a very, very uh, unique specialty and a very fascinating background, and his mission is to expose the covert controllers of mankind, and he assures us that this is not a speculation, a hoax, or simply the figment of people's imagination, much like my infection in my tooth. I, If I had caught a cold, I would have assumed it was a cold, but perhaps it would be the furthering symptoms of something very, very dangerous. And so I like to think of how that might be symbolic of the information we're going to share tonight. I'm not going to discuss the are they real factor. I've moved way beyond that many, many, many years ago, and you can even find those shows in the archive. And uh, so I want to really take some time to uh, embrace the information to understand. Robert Stanley joins me tonight, and his background is formerly, he was formerly a corporate journalist for Honda Research and Development in Torrance, California. He is currently the author of Close Encounters on Capitol Hill and Covert Account Encounters in Washington, D.C. He is the host of his own radio show, the Unicus Radio Hour, and he has previously served as a correspondent for America's Morning News and America's Radio News Network. He has traveled to more than 50 countries during his lifelong pursuit of modern and ancient mysteries and has, over the, over the past 30 years, his quest has been for unique ideas and information that has led him to research and write about many controversial issues, including the topic of our program this evening. Uh, we're going to be talking about some creatures, some things beyond the human eyesight spectrum, things we can't see. Uh, we realize how short-sighted we are when it comes to the full spectrum, and we're going to be discussing what exactly might be living in that space all around us. Welcome, Robert. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Hillary. Thanks for having me on. Great. So where do you want to start? I mean, I could ask you a zillion <laughs> questions. Your articles are just thorough. You have tons of wonderful interviews. You um, give out a lot of information I, I out there. But... I, was a, I, did my, I did time in the dentist chair yesterday. Um, so <laughs> I sympathize. I'm sorry you had to go through this, whatever it is that you're dealing with. Well, isn't that synchronistic? So that's interesting. So, but you know, it wasn't, it turned out to have a good message. I mean, really, what hides underneath these other places yeah. that we can't see that might yeah. harm us that we don't know about? Well, yeah, I mean, but the, the dental health people don't understand is, is it can be lethal, uh, especially infections in the gum. It, it, it can just cause heart attacks and all kinds of other issues. And, um, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm glad you, you're, you've, I do think it's divine that you've actually been able to, or somebody was able to help you figure this out. Um, uh, but any, uh, okay, you know, I was I was reading up on uh, some of your adventures, and I noticed that you've spent a little time with Tom Campbell. 
the guy that wrote yes. uh, My Big Toe, which is a toe is an acronym for theory of everything. Okay. And, yeah, I, I think it's important that we, it, I, since you already have a, a feel for it, I, I've come, I read all, it took me a year to read all his material. And it was a friend of my physicist friend of mine actually gave me that and um, it encouraged me to look at it. And um, I'm a pretty good reader, but it, it, it's, I think it was the fact these concepts were so different that it, it, it just took me that long to uh, digest it all. And here's what I came up with this in summary, is that consciousness not only is primary, but consciousness, energy, and matter are all related. In other words, consciousness is, is, is a waveform that, um, that can take three different phases states, depending on its uh, frequency or vibratory rate. It can be pure consciousness, energy, or matter. And the thing that I, I, I really only recently came to understand is what he's talking about. Consciousness is actually a wave, just like energy and matter. They're all waves. I mean, that's really all it is. And not, not that that isn't important. I just want people to understand that thoughts, consciousness, really are waveforms that we can identify, which I've, I did recently in my final article about these mental parasites we're going to discuss tonight. Um, and I think it's, it's a huge breakthrough for not only on my level of research, but the fact that people can now diagnose this cancer of consciousness. And more importantly, that on the other side, on the healthy side of it, is understand that these thought waves of our consciousness is really the, the fabric, the foundational fabric of all creation. So we are gods. We're just in training. And uh, we've also been taken off the path, unfortunately. We've We've uh, intentionally been taken off the path by some of these, uh, the negative ones. I mean, that, that, that really is something I've known for a while. I just didn't really know how to put it with the proper context. And um, I know I'm kind of jumping around here, but I mean. Yeah, anybody... let, me, let me just start here because some people might be curious quickly if we could just yeah. kind of give an idea of how. Somebody with your background, with your corporate background, got into the <laughs> industry or topic of ET yeah. UFOs. Okay, it's because before I, I worked in the corporate world, I was, um, uh, 1985, I was working as a security guard in Malibu, and uh, I there was a, a young boy there that um, uh, hurt himself really badly. I mean, he was he was bleeding to death, and I intervened. It wasn't my job, but I intervened just enough to help save his life. But in the process, I realized that there was something completely amiss there. I, I wouldn't even have called it paranormal. I wouldn't have called it possession. I just thought something was completely wrong there. And and I had, uh, I guess you would call it, um, uh, uh, what do they call it, extrasensory perception or uh, altered state of consciousness. You know, when you're, the, the trauma, not to me, but the trauma of the event, uh, was so so extreme it caused me to have like a you know heightened sense of awareness, and that's when I actually saw these things in 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 and around the boy and his grandparents, and I saw what was going on, and and it was so traumatic um, to me. I, I, well, what happened was these things started attacking me because I was ruining their feeding frenzy, I guess you'd call it. And um, and when you say attacking, what, what give some examples of what was happening. Well, it, it, it felt like, the analogy I always tell people is like if you if you put water in a sink and then you pull the plug and then you watch it drain down, that's what it felt like in my solar plexus. And I so you found like, a physical sensation in your in your solar plexus or navel area, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was, but it was weird because, I mean, I've never, I've, I mean, look, we've all had stress before, you know, the tightening inside your stomach. But this, this wasn't going away. It actually was getting worse. And I thought, I, yeah, it's really weird. My intuition was, was very strong and it was guiding me. It, it, thank God. I mean, that I had something to fall back on because I had no context for this at the time whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was happening anyway. So, and so can I ask what you did? I mean, how did you, who, who did you reach out to somebody? Did you seek out some help or did you just start processing it by yourself? Well, um, uh, after I got off work, I went to my neighbor's house. He was a spiritual mentor of mine. He was he was uh, a man who had lived as a um, uh, paraplegic for many years, and he he told me about you know he had his uh, what he called it his 
his other body, I mean, his light body. He said he would he would go walk. He, he said he would walk on the beach a lot in his other body. So it was just one of the things he told me. Anyway, when I explained so he was aware happened, of the of the different aspects of consciousness and how it manifests. And so he he would talk to you about that, and and you guys yeah. would have conversations about it. So he, he kind of mentored you, yes? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he, he was an interesting guy. Anyway, so as I told him what had happened, um, he said, "Well, to, it's the equinox tonight. You should go up onto the mountain and watch the sunset." And he says, "You know." Uh, and that that might help. Uh, and at that point, anything sounded better. I just couldn't just sit there and do nothing. <clears throat> so I did, and I I went up to the mountain, and um, uh, it was really ph- phenomenal because there was a full moon coming up as the sun was setting. I was right in the middle of those two bodies, the celestial bodies, and the energy, very much male and female, was uh, unusual, highly highly unusual to be there at that moment. But again, I I you know. I wasn't planning any of this stuff. It just it just happened. So as I was sitting there, I didn't know what to do next. Ultimately, I decided I would sit on the ground proper and and um, um, begin to chant Om. And in such a way that I mean, I kind of had I have some metaphysical background prior to that, but not much. I mean, my dad was a he was a uh, a priest at the uh, self realization. He was a student of Yogananda. So I knew a little bit about Kriya Yoga, but I never really, none of that. It was just something I knew about. I didn't practice it, really. So I was just... Well, what was, a background. That was a, That's an incredible background because I'm sure your father yeah. laid out a lot of different wonderful guideposts along the way. Yeah, but he wasn't really orthodox about it. I mean, there was no strict, you know, like, hey, we got to go to church. Hey, you got to meditate. It was It was just there. And, and I observed these things, but I never really... Uh, so it, it came, yeah, it came in handy in a, in a very mo- a moment of truth, I guess you would say, because as I was sitting there, I realized that um, I had to do something to assist myself, and so that was the reason I was saying chanting uh, Om for, I mean, a long time, uh, was that I felt that it would, I could, I could use that to send out a, a signal, and uh, like an SOS, and. Um, and when I did that, all I was the, the one thought that I was broadcasting on top of that mountain was love, um, because I felt that what I had experienced earlier with that boy was purely evil. Uh, now, when you and we didn't really get into the experience that you're yeah. referring to with the boy, okay? yeah. but I want to let listeners know that they can find the entire thing written up on your UnicusMagazine.com True. website, correct? Yeah, yeah it's all okay. Yeah, it, yeah, that right. So you guys, uh, you guys can go back and and get the get the full scoop on that story uh, after the show. I mean, we don't. I would like to move on and focus on some other things, but sure. I just want you guys to let you know who's listening that it's an extraordinary story. It's well worth a read, and uh, it definitely does explain what he's talking about in depth. Okay, yeah. continue. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Well, so anyway, go, going up there at the top of the mountain. At some point, I I was fatigued and I didn't want to drive ride my motorcycle back down the hill. So I lay down, and I floated right out of my body. I was still fully awake, and that's when I had an um, uh, encounter with a, a radiant being of light. And, you know, it, it, it was, well, it was the beginning of a mm, transformation, I guess you'd say, for me. I mean, it, it, let's put it this way. It gave me a lot more questions than answers. Mm-hmm. So when I so when you I, had a crisis, you had a crisis with this event, and yeah. then you went and you found yourself in a place of nature, and you did the yeah. own to clear the field or to call in your uh, beings of light, and then you this one appears in front of you. Yes. So I just want to make sure we're we're getting it. Yeah. I, again, I was out of my body at that point. It was bizarre mm-hmm. um, because, like I said, I wasn't asleep. I know. I mean, I would only lay down for maybe a minute or two, and then I just felt myself float right up. And so you were out of your body when you saw the, the being of light? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I don't think he was there. I think there was just a part of him was being projected, sort of like a hologram. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least that's my understanding now. He didn't have to physically be there on the mountain. And, you know, again, if people read about this the way I wrote it, was, it, it and this really did happen. It sounds totally bizarre, but... Um, uh, after I came down off the mountain, there was two different women that actually told me that they saw me that night in, in a very similar state where I was, you know, um, glowing. 
that I'd come to them, I spoke to them. The thing was, I have, I still have no memory of what happened when I was at, when I was in the light, and I see this guy come up to me, and I, I just thought to myself, wow, who is that? And he said, I, I'm pretty sure he said, I'm your father. And I, and I looked at him and I said, what? You know, I mean, that didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And the next thing I know, I'm waking up. Okay, now, do you so, think it could have been a possible abduction? No. Absolutely okay, not. so this was a no, different experience. We're not I, talking no, about, okay. Yeah, that's a good question, but you no, know, absolutely not. And but the weird, you know, it, it, this is all so strange. I mean, it really is Twilight Zone stuff. When I woke up, I sat bolt upright. I thought I had just had a weird vision, you know, like I, because I, I wasn't asleep yet. Okay, mm -hmm. there's no way you can just, anyway, I, when I sat upright, I realized that hours had gone by now because the position of the moon. It was now setting, okay? So I thought, mm -hmm. whoa, wait a second. How, how, how could I be going from absolutely lucid whatever to, to like blank? You know, and then I'm waking up. Yeah, so I mean, there was just, missing time. Missing time is, is a, a sign of a, a Yeah, abduction. yeah, yeah. I know. Again, you would think, you would think that that has something to do with induction, but it's, it's not always that way. If you read mm -hmm. about people who've had, um, near death experiences, a lot of times they're told you're not going to be able to remember a lot of what happens here. And the reason is, the way it is explained to these people, these souls, is that it's such a harsh contrast, the life we live here on this world in this way at this time, is so contrary to the way, you know, the ways of the cosmos. I mean, the you true mean creative that, that connection thing that we're supposed to be a part of? <laughs> The connection yeah. thing, the globe. Yeah, I get. It's so important for people to understand what you just said. You yeah. know, it's like two different realities. We have the reality that's been created by the illusionists, the, ma yeah. the master magicians, and then we have right. nature. You know, the real thing. So I just so can we just go back real quick before we get yeah. off this? I want to ask you. You mentioned that you had appeared to two women during yes. this time. Um, can we make sure we go back to that at some point and talk about that? Because I'd love well, to hear I, yeah, more. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you real brief. Okay, great. I, the, I went back to, okay, so I go to work the next day, and then um, I checked on the, I went back to the house to see, I, I wasn't even sure if the kid, the kid made it. Honest to God, he was bleeding so bad. I, <clears throat> with the paramedics picked him up and took him off. I figured, well, he's got a slim chance of making it because there's no hospital in Malibu, and they didn't medevac him out through a helicopter, so I'm thinking, man, this is this is really sketchy but anyway i went back to the house and i went in there and i spoke to the grandparents and they said yes he's gonna he he lost a lot of blood but he's going to live he was still at the hospital at the time and i spoke to them briefly and they told me that and i said well i know this gonna sound weird but um you can heal the scars on his face but unless you heal the scars on his soul this is going to happen again mm. And it, like I said, when I was there with the grandmother that went to right after it happened, she she started telling me things, and, and that's when I realized he was hearing voices. I didn't know anything about schizophrenia or possession or any of that stuff. At the and this was the but, child you were referring to before, right? The child yeah, that yeah, you had same, this evil experience one, right? with. Okay. Same thing. I, I'm okay. just trying to summarize because we don't have a lot of time. No, it's good. I, I'm trying. I'm following you and trying to just make sure everybody is keeping up too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've told this story so many times, but I know there's a lot of people who never heard it before. Okay, so it. Honestly, it was like being thrown into the deep end of a pool. Mm -hmm. And and the only lifeline I had is, is what's coming up next. After I left, I said this. I told this grandpa. I don't know where, why. Again, I, some, I must have seen something. I assume I said that because I knew something. I, didn't, I don't know how I knew it. But it must have happened when I was out of my body. I must have seen something or, or knew something from that about that boy. Okay, because he was a total stranger to me. I don't know why I would say that to his grandparents. And he Other just than, appeared, and you know, he was seeing you, and he was he seeing you for a session of something, or what was he doing with you? Well, no, I mean, he was just a, just a kid security, in, in an ordinary stand kind of play setting type thing. Yeah, he was okay. when I first saw him. He was outside playing. I just put my surfboard away, and I was I was leaving. Oh, that. okay, you were on the beach. Okay, got it. Yeah, I was on the beach, and then but I noticed he had a huge scar on his forehead already. Mm. Okay. And as I walked by him, I could tell he wasn't happy. He would look at me in the eye. He seemed like, you know, wow, something's wrong there. But I just walked past him. I mean, I said hello, but I walked past him. And um, a lot of people rent those houses there. Okay, I know, I knew all the owners. I'd been, I was the head of security for that 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 uh, that beach, uh, the beach is what they call homeowners association. Anyway, um, uh, so I walked past him, and a few minutes later is when 
you know, and what happened was he ran, he got, went back in the house and he, he ran across the, the, the living room into a sliding glass door face first and broke the whole thing with his face. Wow. Yeah, really bad. I mean, God, Lord. And, um, wow. So the kid walked back to, this was the child that it happened to? Yes. Oh, and yeah. so he fell into the sliding no, glass door. He ran. And he ran full speed into it and shattered. And he broke the whole thing. It wasn't. It wasn't safety glass either, which was really freaky. I mean that, but it 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 broke. It in it, the whole thing. There was huge shards of glass. I mean, I, I really thought for sure he was going to die. <clears throat> so you saw on. him on the beach. You had this eye to eye moment, this evil sense feeling thing, and then he ran into the glass. Yeah, he went upstairs. After I walked by him, he decided to go in the house, upstairs. He was playing upstairs momentarily, and then his grandma said he just got up for no reason and ran across the room at full speed and crashed into the thing. So um, when I was up, at, the first thing I did was when I got there was I, I said, did anyone call 911? And, and she didn't even answer me. She was like a she was white as a sheep. Stunned, so, I bet. So I grabbed the phone, and I called, and I said, hey, we've got an, uh, you know, this is a life or death emergency. Send paramedics right now. So they did. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. It's still traumatic when I think about it. And I, mm -hmm. um, when I was um, uh, there, I just figured, well, I'll help clean up the glass because this is gonna. I don't want anybody else to get hurt. So I was cleaning up the glass. And I, that's, she slowly started to like thaw out. I guess you know, come out of the shock. And that's when she was talking to me, and 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 she, you know. She told me she was glad the door was shut because if it wasn't, she said he. I, she says I think he was going to jump over the railing. And I said, inside what? and yeah, he was. And, and I said, look, I know it's none of my business, but um, mm -hmm. I noticed. I know before all this, I said I noticed he had a huge scar on his forehead already. And I said, how did that happen? And she says, well, last year he was in a pickup truck, his father's pickup truck, and 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 he jumped. The, playing with the cat, and the cat jumped out, and he jumped out head first and, and hit his face on the trailer hitch. So, and, and I'm, <laughs> she's telling me this. That's when I realized, oh, my God. I, and, again, I don't know why even this came to my mind, but it was really clear to me that um, he was hearing voices that told him he could fly. Mm. And and that's when I saw the things, the, these parasites. They were in the room in another, like, they're not even physical, okay, but they looked to me like uh, so I, the only thing I could think of was ticks. You know, because I, I mean, I knew what a tick was, and they kind of look like parasites. I mean, that was my impression. But they, they were only, I only saw them for briefly. And then, and then my vision, my, like I lost the, whatever it was, that, that other heightened sense of awareness, just, you know. So I, I really So that I dissipated. A, You're saying that the heightened did. sense of awareness dissipated after his accident? Well, yeah, after I was talking to her and I had that, suddenly I had an awareness. When I, when I, so it seemed like when I reckoned, somehow when I knew that he was hearing voices, somehow I intuited that. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I saw these things. And then as I saw them, I thought, is that real? You know, I mean, I, I thought, no way. I mean, I thought maybe, I mean, I really thought I was just hallucinating because of the, you know, the blood and the glass, the trauma. I mean, you know. I thought I was just like, <clears throat> anyway, I turned, you know, many years later, I found out those things were real. But the, like I said, the next day when I came back to check and I talked to the grandparents, then I, and I went back to where I was normally stationed. And I'm sitting there, and this girl came up. She's a friend of my girlfriend. She says, uh, hey, I saw you last night. You came to my bedroom, and you took me up into the mountains, and you taught me how to fly. And and then she says, you followed me back to my room and made sure I was okay. She says, sort of like Peter Pan. She says, I, she says, um, I think it has something to do with spirituality. I mean, that's what I read in my psych class one time. That's what she's telling me, right? I mean, it, it, so I was just like, I hadn't said a word. And I thought, oh, this is bad. What are the odds of that? Right. Well, there's obviously some strange highness, you know, high strangeness going on, you know, that isn't. <laughs> It's kind of coordinating energies, and and so yeah. you mind if I ask what your relationship was with that woman? Uh, yeah, she was a, a very close friend of my girlfriend at the time, and um, um, yeah, I mean I knew her, but I mean have I you ever been like, involved with her as a partner? No, 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 especially no, especially not like that. I mean, I uh, she 
didn't know anything about metaphysics or spirituality at all. That was not her her wheelhouse whatsoever. And we never talked about that stuff anyway. And for her to come up and tell me that uh, by itself would have been completely bizarre. But the, the, the timing of it, the coincidence of it was just, I mean, that was beyond, the, at the moment I was just stunned. And then um, after I got off work that same afternoon, I went to my apartment and um, uh, my grandmother called me. A very spiritual woman, okay. And she said, she said to me, she says, Robbie, I saw you at the foot of my bed last night and you were telling me something and for the life of me, I can't remember what it was, but she said, it, it was just the most beautiful thing. You were all lit up like a Christmas tree. And I thought, what? You know, <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 none of this made any sense whatsoever. So if I was thrown in the deep end of the pool, that these two women were like the life preserver, somebody tossing me a life preserver. Because honestly, I thought, I really thought I was losing my mind or something was, I slipped in some gears there or something. Didn't make any so sense. You have, so you have this experience. You have this yeah. experience, a very traumatic experience. Uh, you were already having issues, you know, maybe perhaps with understanding some paranormal type stuff, right? Or was this like the first one kind of event that ever happened to you? Oh, no, no, no. I, I had an out-of-body experience 10 years earlier in the Great Pyramid as a teenager at age 15. So you've had uh, some extraordinary yeah, ins and yeah, outs yeah, of this yeah. world. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so absolutely. we have this but experience that... Go ahead. No, it wasn't like I was looking for this stuff. Right. Okay. Well, we don't usually, people don't usually go out and look for it. So when, so what did you, I'm still curious about the little boy yeah. and how you came to equating your experience with being ET related. Oh, well, because <laughs> when I was up on the mountain and I met this being, uh, <clears throat> this radiant being, uh, who said he was my father, which I really couldn't make any sense out of that. Um, uh, uh, it was about a month later I had another lucid dream, much like when I was a kid growing up in Malibu. I had a lucid dream, meaning that I knew exactly where I was. I was back at my house in Malibu, and I was looking out at the ocean, and suddenly three spaceships came in from the east, and they were silver-colored, and they passed right over the house that I grew up in. And I watched them enter the water off of the coast there, right at uh, in Azuma Beach or Point Doom, for people who know that area. It's famous now because of the, you know, so-called UFO base out there. But um, moments later, these same three ships came back out of the water going the same. It was like reverse, you know, what they just did. Now they were coming out of the water, passing back over the house, and then, now they were golden colored. And I remember yelling towards the house where my dad had a, a studio and office. And um, I said, Dad, Dad, come check out, check us out, UFO, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and in that moment, there was a flash of light, and it was the same guy. It was the same guy. So you right. had your UFO ET experiences have been uh, m mixed as, with physical and etheric type experiences, yeah, right? Exactly. Okay. So uh, moving on, let's let's go into what it is really that you started to because you've put out information on the internet, you talk about this now, you call uh some of these beings archons. I mean, you've gotten pretty specific with your, you know, categories and 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 cataloging all of this stuff. And so we're telling a fascinating story, but moving into how you came onto the platform of talking about this subject and sharing information and research and pictures and articles and and all of this stuff, there was a pretty big leap there, right? So you go from this corporate life to this questionable type immersion into <laughs> spirituality. You have these really bizarre experiences bordering everything. Well, actually, covering all the spectrum. You have wonderful, positive, yeah. light-filled experiences. You have connection experiences with other human beings, including your family. And then you have this evil type possession experience with this little boy. And yeah. so, I mean... Then you go into pursuing it with a lot of passion. So I'm yeah. curious, you know, moving into through those experiences, you know, you decided to really take this on and yeah. take them on and give them names and go into all of the, the really, really specific information that you've put out. So 
I'm I'm curious what happened with the little boy and that energy because you know what I mean and I'm going to be honest with the new age industry we have a real problem with accepting things that we judge as negative whether it be anger or ETs or ETs that aren't all good you know glowing glittery unicorny type beings here to help us so when we talk about the bad or the evil or the part that's dark that we don't understand i mean god it's a huge movement from processing that into some kind of action which you've done very well so i just kind of want to fast forward into the okay now here you are going (laughs) into the information and bringing it into the platform type status and and delivering it to people so what, what was the turning point that experience or the com you know the accumulation of those experiences or how did you get into that sudden moment where you're like i have to do something and i'm going to start a website and put out this information into the public and expose myself to that Mm. it was a natural progression honestly i was not in the corporate world when i made the commitment and it was really for myself first i was trying to figure things out and the more i found the more questions i had actually as a matter of fact when i went back up to the mountain looking to hopefully to find that person again, that guy said he was my father, right? Mm -hmm. Um, What I found instead were ancient ruins, ancient megalithic statues up in the mountains there. And it was bizarre because, I mean, it's, it's one thing to find something like that, but the fact is I had growing up as a child, many times I had lucid dreams of being there and seeing that place when it was still intact. And that really floored me. I thought, wait a minute, this is weird. This just keeps getting weirder and weirder. So I went up, I kept going up to the mountains when I had time and, and exploring these ruins and bringing people up there and saying, hey, do you see what I'm seeing? They're like, yeah, I do. I see this. This is, how come nobody's ever talked about this? Um, it was literally a lost ruins. And, but as I was there, back in the late 80s to the early 90s, mid-90s, yeah, almost an entire decade I was up there exploring, and, and especially at nighttime, I, I would take people up there, and we would have close encounters with these craft at the, at the exact location, which is now everybody seems to know is, uh, uh, thanks to Google, um, is it looks like a uh, underwater UFO base there. Um, but the thing is, as a... As I got older and a little bit smarter, I started to use uh, whatever whatever ability I had as a intuitive to to seek out information and try and put this thing together because I know a lot of people think they know what's going on, but clearly we've been lied to. Okay, and and when when you talk about evil, I mean honestly, it, at, at this point, I can say very clearly and accurately that evil is an infection by these mental parasites. And more importantly, we can, tra- <laughs> we, we can trace back the origins of these things. It was completely accidental. It was unintentional. And uh, if you think back to what I just said earlier at the beginning of the show about consciousness actually being waveforms that can create or do create everything that we see and, and experience, uh, from the most mundane physical thing to the most advanced spiritual thing, it's all done through the propagation of waves, waveforms. And our DNA does play a huge part in that. It really does. Uh, one of the things that happened to me on the mountain, I wasn't aware of it, but as I was sitting there uh, doing that alm, and I was, and because I was focused only on one thing, which was love, I unintentionally was unwinding my DNA and allowing it to reconnect to the cosmos. That's how, that's how I could enter that other dimension and, and do those things, see those things. Again, a lot of it's been blocked, but again, I'm sure that's from my own protection. Um, but at this point, at this point, I can tell you quite clearly that we all have that ability. That's not supernatural or superhuman. That's actually normal. Uh, oh sure, the, the, yeah. We have, we definitely have the ability to connect. It's, it's uh, something I think that has become more understood and accepted. Over the years, I mean, I remember when I first started my, you know, becoming a Reiki teacher, it was like, Reiki what? (laughs) And now you hear it all over the place, and we have hospital teams with, you know. So I'm interested also because you have a journalist background. You have, you know, a reporter background. So uh, when you were working in mainstream news, it was mainstream news. So how was that to your (laughs) being to have to be, 
into that kind of constructed reality, whatever you want to call it, you know, world, yeah. and then have this other life where you're experiencing this in in vast scale. Well, let me, let me try and help put this into perspective. I was, I guess you'd say I was living the life of a mystic up until the point at the time when I met my, my current wife, and she had started the magazine Unicus, magazine for Earthbound Extraterrestrials. When we met, fell in love, worked together on the magazine for many years, until we had our son, and then it was time that we both went to work in the corporate world. That's how I ended up at Honda. And I learned, I'd, I'd already been working as an editor and journalist in, from the magazine, but I learned how to do more of a, a little more uh, corporate style uh, research and reporting for Honda. And, and yeah, it was, you know, I knew, look, my manager, he was, he's friends with Billy Meyer. I mean, we had some very esoteric information. We were sort of slowly leaking into the, the upper, uh, upper management of Honda. Um, but, you know, at, when I left there, I, I continued my pursuit. Actually, I never, I never compromised on my, um, my quest to try and find out the, some, some answers, put, everything into context, you know, again, mostly for myself, but um, I've come to realize that, you know, the reason I have access to so much information is because the agreement, as I understand it, is that as long as I don't um, censor the information that comes then I and, it, and I agree to share it with the public, then I can have access to pretty much anything that I Now, this um, is an agreement understand. with who? Agreement with your spirit guides? Agreement with a, a, a being? Who or exactly did you make that agreement with? Well, let's go back to what I said about this being. He claims he was my father. And it, he represents uh, the original creators of this world. He and his mother were the ones that actually created this world and put all the life here, the DNA. It's a, it's a living library. I mean, it's, it, it is, you know... There's a lot so of as long as you do them. what they ask, you put out exactly what they want you to put out, then they, they're cooperative and they work with you. Do you feel that perhaps that might be some kind of manipulation, or do you think it's just a demand from them, or how, how do you see that? Well, I've come to learn, and only recently has, and again, this has taken a lot of effort for me. It's not something I say very casually, mm -hmm. um, I'm not, and I'm not trying to convince anybody. I'm just sharing what I've learned, is that mm -hmm. we're in the, we're still in the midst of the Civil War here. Okay, and it's, it is galactic in proportion, and, and its scope is that it, it, you have to understand this is there, there's, an, uh, there's an, an anomaly that occurred a long time ago, uh, specifically with a being that some people would know as Enki or Lucifer. He goes by many different names, but he and his crew are the ones that, uh, that birthed these mental parasites originally. And, when you um, say burst, you mean uh, conquered? No, they. Uh, no, well, are they? Are they grew them out, or I mean, what do you mean by burst? When, they are yeah, from them. In unintentionally created with their consciousness, they went okay. into a forbidden zone, and they they were so traumatized by the let's just call it a magnetic storm that was there. The the, the energy that was there so badly distorted their consciousness, and they, you understand these were. Benevolent creator gods, divine beings, when they went in, when they came out, they were utterly corrupt. They had, they had gone mad. Sort of like a dog that goes, he's rabid, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you lose all connection. You don't have that loving communication anymore. That relationship is broken because of the parasite. They unintentionally created with their consciousness these mental parasites. And, uh, they, they, they infected themselves, and then as they moved out of that area, they started infecting other people and other planets ultimately suffered and literally were destroyed in the process. And that's where the Civil War started. So the Civil War really is between a loving, compassionate consciousness and a destructive, uh, dis disconnected type dysfunctional consciousness yes is that do i understand you correctly yes it's it, they have become they became psychopathic they they have a real hard time telling the truth or even recognizing the truth they lost their ability to create with their consciousness that's why they started all the sophistry of science 
<clears throat> and that's why they started doing all that genetic engineering or genetic manipulation as opposed to just simply creating DNA and genetics. You know, genes do respond to consciousness. It's called epigenetics. And, um, you know, it's, it's just like, again, because the reason they lost that ability is because their consciousness is so corrupted. It's, di it's distorted. It, it now, what's the antidote to this when we have these kind of things happen? So I can see what you're saying, and I think everybody listening can also see it. It's a very kind of clear split, right? Yeah. It's like a split right, right, in consciousness. Right. Duality, yeah. yeah, duality didn't exist prior to that, at least not in this universe as far as mm -hmm. I know. And, again, this was totally unintentional. I mean, yes, it was a forbidden zone, but I don't know who made it that way. But Lucifer was actually a very high creator god prior to going in there, and it, so was the rest of his crew. But when they went in there, like I said, they became demented. Uh, and when they came out, they, they were utterly destructive, and it was something completely new, uh, unseen here. So it's taken quite a while for people to even come up with any kind of contingency plans to deal with it. And a lot well, mostly of aren't they dis pretty... aren't they diagnosed with, uh, you know, different types of mental labels from the psychology world or the psychiatry world? Is it mm -hmm. perhaps possible that we have missed the point? You know, we've kind of missed yeah. it and put it into another little category over there, and we just diagnose somebody with uh, a disease, and then they move forward with that, and everybody acts and treats them relevant to that, when well, in fact it could be one of these kinds of cases. Yeah, specifically schizophrenia. People do hear voices. Look, everybody does. You know, they just don't admit it. And Well, God, they do when everybody. they say it's God. Right? Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, they admit that, it when they, I heard the voice of God, and they told me to go do this, and everybody cheers. So I, I think that that's important to point out. <laughs> it's not always negative. It's, sometimes it's a positive thing. I listened to my angels. My, my spirit guides came and told yeah. me this. So it's hello. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. I mean, look, we, uh, when we're healthy, we have the ability to connect to all the other life forms in the, in the universes out there. Uh, we're just not healthy here. There's been, like I said, when, when after the Civil War started, Lucifer was passed over. He was supposed to become the king of the empire, but unfortunately he was he was insane, so obviously his parents weren't going to let him take that position. And um, so he decided, hey, you know, the heck with you guys. I'll just create my own empire. He went off illegitimately and started taking over entire worlds, and anybody who stood in his way was either killed. A lot of planets were utterly destroyed in the process. I mean, it's, it's been a nightmare. And um, the genetic engineering he did here, once he took over this, was this world was a jewel on the crown of the empire. And it was a bit of an experiment. It was probably going to be the blueprint for the rest of the universe at some point. <clears throat> the the seeds that were forming here, in a, in a, truly in a perfect world, this was this was paradise. It was a everything, all the life here was symbiotic. There was no predatory or parasitic behavior at all. And um, uh, all the beings simply lived off of the um, the light that was coming through, which again is, is consciousness. This is just a just another way of putting it. They were really plugged in, uh, and everything about this planet was to support life in a very peaceful, loving manner, and so that it could be, you know, used as a blueprint. And that's up until the time that about a half a million years ago when Lucifer and his crew decided they would come here, take over, uh, and turn this into a prison planet and create a bunch of uh, slaves, a slave species. And it wasn't for mining gold. I, you know, I, I'm sure they would have done that anyway, but that's not the only reason they did it, um, clearly. So, so we have this happening, and, you know, one of the things I learned real quick when I was researching the UFO and ET industry, and I was doing I did about two years' worth of shows on yep. interviewing different people from different parts of that world. And one of the things I learned really fast was that people can get really confused and lost in this information that's all yep. over the Internet, that's open and available for anybody with a search bar. And once you start to go into, so, because I feel it's been extremely infiltrated, whether it's it through government, military, 
military people want to just break up the alter, alternative media world or whatever you know they they really have done a very good job of inter you know interfering with that so people get confused they get lost really fast so when they hear this kind of information i just want to tell everybody who's listening you really have to just take it process it Put the information in through your filters and trust your intuitive gut on what's true and what's not. And then, you know, you start to see a pattern once you can break through that. I I have anyway. And yeah. once you see the pattern, you can start to track and trace the information. And the reason I'm having you on my show is because a lot of my own research and my own time going into this topic personally has told me that there is indeed that split in consciousness. There is indeed that negative uh, evil type entity or, you know, consciousness, life form, whatever you want to call it. And then yeah. there are this love, compassion, but there's also these beings that can manipulate and trick people and think that they're having these great, wonderful experiences yeah. when in fact they're manipulating the emotional energy and maybe experimenting with creating like a twin flame love or a soulmate connection. Let's see what happens and put two people together and do that kind of love bite thing like Eve Lorgan says. And so it's one of these things that, I, you know, you just almost have to go back to street smarts and, and just yeah. really kind of trust your own experiences and people who share their own experiences and don't really have a money-making type agenda on the information. Um, that's what I have discovered anyway. I mean, I just had to interject that. So yeah, when you're talking true. about that's this... A good, that's a good way to uh, advise people listening in this audience. You, you really can't just take anybody's word for it because... We are in a, we live on a battlefield, all right? And the first casualty of war is always the truth. Some people call it the fog of war. The father of all lies is, as I said before, Lucifer. He's the, he is the lord of the archons. He's the one that, he and his crew are the ones that inadvertently created these mental parasites. And they are very nasty and uh, most people are infected. It's, and even for those of us who are not, um, we're being affected by people who are, okay, here on this mm -hmm. planet. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 consciousness is everything, okay? And what we're talking about here ultimately for this, the, <laughs> the antidote is to, uh, recognize, first of all, what the infection is. And second of all, that, that you do have, we all have, uh, thought waves that are being broadcast through our DNA. Not brain waves, but we're actually emitting waveforms light and sound from our DNA. And it's so, again, this is why it's really important for us to realize that um, that we can take charge of the, or we should take full responsibility for what kind of thoughts or waveforms that we're broadcasting, okay, uh, because we can do that. We can do that. Yes, it takes a lot of effort. Okay, I'm not trying to minimize it. But one of the reasons I wanted to speak with you and your audience about this is because there is something coming here. It's, a, it's, it's loosely called a super wave. I don't think that really defines it well but enough, but I'll tell you this much. We do know, as you, as you and I have talked before and done our research, is the DNA does respond. It's, it's an antenna, and it's a transceiver, actually, and not only on a physical but a spiritual level or, you know, uh, etheric. It, there, these, these frequencies that we experience actually change us, change our genetics and our, obviously our consciousness. There is this super wave of energy that will wash over the planet at some point. I can't say exactly for sure, but it is coming. And when that happens, everybody's DNA is going to be activated 100%. And for some people, that was going to, it is truly going to be the shock of a lifetime. Okay, I'm not sure everybody's going to physically make it because it's just well, it makes perfect sense, Rob. Because when we have these solar flare type activities happen, we have these you know yeah. protons and stuff come through the Earth, and some people are actually out there tracking, you know, the the human experience reaction. You know, what are the symptoms of that? And it's quite interesting how people are actually connecting the solar flare events to human body, how you feel, maybe your emotions yeah. are a little, you know, whatever. So it, it, what you're saying is very true. So when this big waves, are you saying it's cosmic? Is it going to be coming from, like, yeah. the center I, of our galaxy? Well, that's already happened. During the period of 87, 1987 to 2012, we were aligned with the galactic center, and there were unique frequencies that were coming to us, and it did start to start to activate 
our DNA that's been dormant, intentionally shut down by the Luciferians to make us more compliant as servants to them. But like I said, there's, there's a, there was a, a change, a shift that occurred from 87 to 2012. That was all preparation for what's really coming, which is, like I said, they just call it a super wave because it's a massive wave that's going to wash through this. Um, I don't know where it's coming from. And it, what's really bizarre is, for me anyway, was that I, I knew it was coming. I just didn't have any confirmation of it up until recently. A lot of things have not made sense to me, but I just kind of kept it to myself until I found some sort of confirmation uh and, and therefore, you know, once I did that, I figured, well, I should at least tell people uh, about it, and then they can prepare, or they can just dismiss the whole thing as being, you know, pure nonsense. Well, we can always ignore that infection in our mouth, right? <laughs> and we can have the res responsibility of those choices. Uh, yeah. yeah, I get it. I do. I get it. I know, you know, we've tried to squeeze a lot of information, including your story, which is part of it, yeah. uh, in the show. And I know an hour doesn't really give you justice. Okay. But, I, again, you know, I want people to know that they can go to your website, Unicus, U-N-I-C-U-S, magazine.com, and you can read all kinds of different ar um, archives and different stuff on there. Now, what's the antidote to this? We've been describing it. We've yeah. been talking about it. What, what do we do to help the situation? Uh, it sounds overly, overly simplistic, but it is a matter of um, uh, in, in, intentionally calming your consciousness. I, I, don't, I don't even like to, to use the word meditate even though I'm familiar with it because that people have their own, they sort of, you know, there's a lot of dogma around that even though it's, I don't think of it as a, as a religious thing, but some people do. I, I would just say this, um, if you go to the website, unicusmagazine.com, click on the antidote for archons. It, that's important because it takes you through, it actually gives you visual cues some graphics there that will actually help show you if you're having any, you know, problems with this. You can actually see what we're talking about here, and it may help some people to to achieve what we're talking about, which is the antidote. The antidote is to to remain calm. I, that that sounds simple, but in this world, we're, that's really a difficult thing to do. Calm, peaceful, loving, and creative. That's the those are the those are the things that people need to focus on as much as possible, for as long as possible, in order to uh, realign their consciousness. I mean, there's some other techniques, too, I've, I've, uh, people have shared with me over the years, such as uh, timing your breath, synchronizing your breathing to your heartbeat. And your heart rate changes all the time, so you have to do this when you're very quiet. But it, if you do that, I found it's fantastic. It really does reset the nervous system. It helps you to calm down. It also improves your circulation. Um, the other thing is people need to be aware of is uh, obsession with anything leads to possession by these thought forms, you know. And okay, say that one more time. Obsession, obsession of anything. Yeah, if you obsess over whatever is money, sex, power, fame, whatever, if you're obsessed with something like that, it opens the door for these mental parasites to possess your consciousness and therefore you become a puppet of these things. And, you know, the thing is, even though they were born a long time ago, st we unintentionally now or unknowingly, most of us are breeding and feeding these things here. And knowing that is really important because if you know that and you don't, if you don't feed into it, if you don't generate, create, breed, whatever you want to call it, if you don't make, create any more of these things with your consciousness, you're helping you are actually being part of the solving the problem. You are, that's the antidote. It, we yeah. really all, all have a part to play in this, a huge role. Sure, to yeah, we, we do. But, you know, also, on the other hand, I think it's important to remind people that it's not about stuffing your feelings or not feeling you angry know. or running away from people who are angry. <laughs> it, it's. I mean, we really have to take accountability and responsibility for our emotions. Yeah. And part yeah. of that is the healing process, wouldn't you agree? So we need Absolutely. do need to face our shadow yeah. self and the things that yes. we do internally. Yeah. Before we well, just well, shut well, it well, off like a switch you know, and pretend I'll, it doesn't you, exist. Let me leave you with this. Forgiveness is really important because it helps. It doesn't. It changes the dynamic. The longer you hold on to some anger, fear, whatever, uh, you, you remain traumatized, 
emotionally, and you're broadcasting out those really distorted wave, thought forms, waves into the cosmos. And it sticks. It sticks to you. It sticks to other people. It, it becomes, it, it literally, you know, it's an infection. Okay, so, so obviously nobody really wants to. Once you recognize this, if you accept that what I'm saying is true, then, then it's incumbent upon anybody, everybody, to start doing their part. Well, there, isn't, there isn't a magic pill. There is no one a thing that's going to save us. But it, we have to do this for ourselves, and we can do it. See, that's the beauty of it. It, yeah, it, well, we're, we're kind of at the end of the, the, end okay, of the hour, okay. unfortunately, but I, I do want to leave on the note also that, you know, your own healing process is extremely important, but people won't heal if they don't go into those darker, shadowy aspects of self, if they just band-aid them or pretend like, you know, they don't want to be around people who are going through that. There's, right. a, I've seen it. I've seen it in the new age industry all over the place. People will right. kind of act like someone's got, you know, cooties and they don't want to go near them because <laughs> They have some kind of dark entity attached to them or whatever it is that they put out there. You right. break it by loving and forgiving and being yeah. consistently supportive of people's healing process. If you think you want, for one second that you can't go through uh, another person's process by being a supporter, you're wrong. Because when you go through your own healing process with whatever it is, your supporters, your people will, will have a, a, a positive influence in helping you to get through it. And you can't go through, you know, you can't have this kind of knowledge and awareness in life and think that you can just go into the, the topic or the world of understanding what this is with an out of balanced, unhealed, wounded backpack on your back. Don't you agree? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we have to clear up our own consciousness and, and it, it is, yeah, it's infectious in a good way. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, good, that, I mean, we have to infect with love. We infect with love yep. and compassion in, and, and we, we go into that as strong as we can. I don't agree with, we don't like look at everything, you know, dark. Some of the headlines you turn on the nightly news. It's to me, that's dark, well, but I look at it yep. to see what the programming is. We're out of time. Right. We're unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, Hillary. Robert. Thank it. you so much for being here, Robert Stanley. Everybody, you can go to his website and read more, and get into some of the discussions. Uh, our archive will be up here on Achieve Radio. You can listen to the show again if you like or share it. We appreciate your time. Thank you again for joining. And until My next pleasure. time, we cross paths. Namaste.